Hello everyone, so today I'm going to walk you through Linux Essential Certification from Linux Professional Institute that I managed to pass last month. Whether you are just uh, starting with Linux or you're already using this OS and you want to try your skills and try to take the certifications, this video might be for you. I will cover why this specific OS is so crucial for your IT, DevOps or uh, cloud career and why it's so relevant to really study this system. I'm going to tell you what is the passing score, how difficult the questions really were, how to prepare for the exam and what materials to, to use. At the end of the video, of course, I will share what was my score and how I managed to, to get the score. Hello, hi, and welcome to NetCafe. In this channel, we talk about DevOps, cloud, networking, certifications. So if you like this type of topics, consider subscribing. So I would start actually with the motivation to take the examination because me as a DevOps engineer, I found on um, Linux as a highly relevant in my daily work. So we'll start with explanation on why Linux is such a universal and popular tool among the DevOps cloud IT engineers. Let's start with the fact that um, Linux really dominates the service. So cloud and hosting services such as, for, such as for example GCP, Azure or AWS really have they are heavily based on Linux based infrastructure and servers. This is of course because Linux offers a huge scalability options, performance, stability, and this is really what makes it so perfect for the critical infrastructure such as for example servers that's supposed to run seven days a week. If you're working in the IT industry, learning this specific skill will be highly relevant for you if you want to succeed in your career. I would say that another reason why Linux is so um, desirable in the in the industry is the fact that it's open source. DevOps engineers, cloud or IT admins can really tweak the configuration, scripts, integrate with other various open source software, such as for example Docker, CI/CD engines, uh, version control systems, such as for example Git. So this really makes Linux a very powerful tool and of course configuration management tools such as for example Ansible, right? The third reason why you should, I think, learn Linux as a DevOps or IT engineer is because Linux is the backbone of today's automation. In DevOps, everything is about, about basically how to streamline a mundane uh, manual task into the automated pipeline. Shell scripting and Linux is basically the primary tool used for this type of task. Whether you have things such as, for example, I don't know, uh, server deployment, uh, backups, monitoring, scaling, Linux has already built in tools that allows us to perform a lot of the tasks that can help us with the daily automation. So we as an engineers, we basically rely on the scripts that we that we write to streamline the manual processes and the cut delivery time as much as we can, right? Last but not least, I would like to also highlight the fact that Linux very harmoniously integrates with Docker and containerization in general. So Docker is one of the most popular DevOps tools that leverage uh, kernel features such as, for example, namespaces or cgroups. As you might know already, containers are um, scalable, lightweight, portable and efficient because they heavily rely on the Linux systems. Since container platforms are built on Linux, uh, and engineers might must really understand what is the backbone for that technology and how to efficiently manage the containers. These aspects of Linux really make it foundational for DevOps and cloud engineers who really need to build, automate, test and manage the cloud or on-prem infrastructure. Consequently, taking the um, certifications such as, for example, LPI, uh, Linux Essential certification that I took one month ago, Ago, is a such a great idea. Now let's move to the chapter about the exam. It's we are now on the uh, LPIC Linux Professional Institute uh, website dedicated for this specific certification and we can see that to be certified we just need to take one exam that uh, has the code with the code 110160. So there are no prerequisites for the exam. We'll have 40 questions. This is exactly how much I had. That must be complete, completed within 60, 60 minutes. There is no renewal policy, meaning that the exam is just a validity period is a lifetime, which is, I think, great. When we look at the exam objectives, we can see basically really the basics of the specific OS. So we have the evolution of the operation system. We have finding your way in the system, 
meaning it's just basically programs like C CD, LS, uh, PWD, uh, command line, archiving the files with tar for example, searching with grep. These are really the basics that every engineer, I think, must know if you work with this specific uh, OS. I really like the chapter about the distribution because I'm always confusing this. So we have the quick uh, description of uh, what is Debian, what is Red Hat, Linux Mint, so all the good stuff. We also have the introduction to the applications that run on Linux, such as, for example, Nginx, MariaDB, Samba, NFS. So these are really the tools that as a DevOps or cloud engineer, you'll be working with daily. We also have the command line basics. So again, we have uh, how to move in bash, how to use echo, what are the uh, what are the environmental variables, export type. Very important, which is also how to manage the files with moving, copying, deleting, creating the folders. So you can see that these are really the basic that you would later use to build your higher level of uh, expertise within Linux. In my view, it's quite comprehensive curriculum. It, it touches many different aspects of Linux. And uh, in my view, for the beginner or for the person that is just starting at a junior position, this should be really an excellent starting point if you want to go into the Linux. Let's now also talk about the materials that I have been using. And here is a good news because the Linux Professional Institute offers us a free PDF that we can download and learn from the uh, from, learn from the material. I really enjoy reading the book uh, because it has both theoretical and practical approach towards the system. We have some guided exercises, we have some explorational exercises which are quite uh, a bit more um, advanced because the PDF also has um, includes answers for all the, the questions that uh, LPI asks us. So in total we have how many like 430 pages, which in my view is very interesting to read, very easy to digest material. And in my view, they really made a great job by preparing and giving this material for free. Of course, the link to the specific PDF is in the description, so you can download it. Even if you don't plan, for example, to study for the Linux Essential certification, in my view, it's still very much worth to, to read it and to see what are the gaps that you might have in your Linux knowledge. Definitely, I encourage you to go through it because it really gives us an excellent foundational knowledge and introduction. Okay, now I would like to also share a bit of my experience because it was the first time I took the examination from from home rather than from the uh, testing center. It was actually much better than I expected. I was able to manage my trial sort of exam to see whether hardware is connected, whether camera is working, microphone is working, I see the screen about two hours before the exam. So that really sort of a bit reduced my stress because I was a little bit skeptic whether everything will work. Of course, everything just went very smoothly because also I didn't have to commute to testing center. It was just, I think, quite relaxing experience. So then when everything was clean, the proctor could have seen that, okay, the workstation is prepared. I could have uh, taken the, the exam. It was very smooth. It was very pleasant. I didn't have any issues. If you are uh, thinking about maybe taking the exams from home but and you usually take it from the testing center I encourage you to try at least one taking from home because it's a really very pleasant I would say now let's talk also about the exam itself so as I had already said I had uh, there are 40 questions that you have to uh, solve within 60 minutes I managed to score 100% in each of the category and I managed to score 100% in the whole exam. So I would say that it was quite easy for me because I also read the book about twice. I really find I really find it quite nicely written. Of course, I had some previous uh, Linux uh, experience from my current job and my previous jobs. And I also work a lot of with Ansible that is also related to, to uh, Linux quite a lot. Consequently, the exam was quite easy for me. And if you have, let's say, one or two years experience with Linux, I, sh I would say that you can very be you can be quite confident about passing the the exam. I think the the, the score, uh, the minimum score that you need to get is 500 out of 800. So it's not something that is not doable. I think it's quite feasible to make the score. 
once again, I just want to say that my whole experience was really fun. I really enjoyed taking the exam and the questions itself. It was, I think, mostly ABCD, but there was also some typing a bit, multi-choice questions, if I'm not mistaken, mostly about, of course, about Linux, how to move around. Everything is in the book, so I really encourage you to, to download the, the PDF and take the exam. And okay, one more thing uh, is also relevant to say about the pricing. So the pricing for the exam really depends on the country of your um, where you, where you, where are you taking the exam. So I was taking in the yellow country in the tier one, so I paid one hundred twenty dollars, uh, but you can pay it even as much as eighty dollar in the red zone in the tier three uh, countries. If I'm not mistaken, you first need to buy the voucher and, and then you upload the voucher number at the person view uh, web page. So that's quite easy. That's quite straightforward. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe. And if you have some more questions or suggestions, what other topics you would like to hear, let me know. Thanks.